Microsoft OneNote has been the staple note-taking application for thousands of people, including myself, for almost two decades now. But with the introduction of Microsoft Loop, I've been finding myself using Loop more for collaboration, especially within Microsoft Teams. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how you can use Loop more effectively within Teams. And of course, if you want a full breakdown of all the features in Microsoft Loop, I've got a full video on that as well that I'll link in the description down below. If you do like this video, make sure you also give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button too. With that being said, let's get into this. The amazing thing about Microsoft Loop is that it transcends boundaries. You can see we have a Loop component here in a meeting. Then I can jump into a sent email and then continue working on the Loop component, even in a sent email. And then I can jump again into the Loop application and then continue working here too. And this isn't just me, but this is anyone that has access to the Loop can work on that Loop component, no matter what application you're in, whether it is Loop, whether it is Outlook, whether it is Teams. And of course, in 2024, there is an update coming to OneNote. We can actually embed Loop components into OneNote as well. So the beautiful thing here is that you can be on different devices and different programs, but you can continue easily editing in live time with Loop. What I'm gonna to jump to now, because we're looking at using loop in Microsoft Teams specifically for meeting notes is actually one of my favorite features. And what we're gonna do is create a brand new meeting here and we're gonna create a recurring meeting. So let's just jump to today's date. And I'm just gonna pop in a meeting for today at or Monday the 18th at 1 p.m. Let's just give it a quick title. Loop note taking demo. I'm gonna add in some attendees. And then I'm also gonna set a repeat on this meeting that it repeats weekly for the next month and a half. Let me hit save. So I've got someone here that I can collaborate with. And then down the bottom in our meeting details, you can see here it says add an agenda so others can edit. This is actually a loop component. So if I select on this, you can see here you get the loop icon, it's getting things ready. And then it gives you a basic meeting agenda. And we can start putting this in before, after, or working on it during the meeting. So I'm just gonna pop in, learn about loop. And then I'm gonna hit send on that meeting. So instead of having a static agenda, this is one that we can carry with us and one we can continue editing week on week. So now I'm gonna jump into that meeting here, hit join. And then automatically the notes application is gonna open up, but if it doesn't, simply select on show notes. You can see on the right hand side, the meeting notes are gonna pop up. This is actually that loop component. And then we can continue working away and adding notes. So we can work on this before or after or even during the meeting, and we can share this around different applications as well. Right now, the only people with access to it are the people in the meeting, but I'll show you how you can share this around too. So this was the meeting for Monday the 18th. If I hit leave, the cool thing is we can jump forward in time to a few weeks from now. So now we're at Monday the 1st, we're gonna join that same recurring meeting. And those notes are gonna pop up again, where you can see here, it says we're learning about Loop. We can tick that off because we've done it. We can add some follow-up tasks here. You can assign this to somebody. So this can be your entire organization that pops up here. We're gonna assign this to Adele. We'll give her a due date. But the cool thing here is that we can actually keep those meeting notes live with us and you can have it adding agendas and meeting notes and follow-up tasks and all that sort of stuff. But the beauty of it being live is that it stays within the realm of OneNote. You can always access it from here and anyone in the meeting can edit it without needing to open up a separate program. And Loop also has so many more features in the three agenda notes and follow-ups uh, that we can see here. But I'd recommend checking out my full video on that to see some of those features as well. So now what I wanna do is actually select on the more actions section. And you can see here, this actually is where more of the power of Loop comes in. You can, I'm gonna start with the bottom here, which is open in browser. And that's where you can actually use the loop.com or you can use the loop program, which we have here as well, um, to just focus on the meeting notes. This is great if you really wanna dig in and do a lot more than just take some quick notes. But also if you select on the ellipses, you can see who has access to the component right now. Um, people outside this meeting with access to the link. Right now it's just ourselves. We can of course copy that component to share with other people and we're gonna do that in a second. 
and then you can view shared locations. So loop, as we saw before, uh, is across multiple different applications. So you wanna know where this lives. So you can see here that it lives in Teams, of course, because that's where we created it, but it also lives in Outlook too. And you can choose to add it to a loop workspace if you wanted to turn it into a bigger piece. But we're not gonna go on the loop workspace for today's video. What we're gonna do is go more actions and we're gonna copy this component. And then we're gonna jump over to Microsoft Teams. So right now, and actually let's leave that meeting as well because we've copied our loop component. We're gonna jump over to chat or we could even jump over to a team site. Say for example, we're working with our retail channel. I could actually go into the retail, retail channel here under general, start a post, and then I could actually go control V and I can drop in that loop component here. This means that anyone within the channel can now access and start editing that loop component. So what we've done is we may have started taking notes in our meeting and that meeting could have been between two people, but really that note affected five, 10, 15 other people. We can now drop that loop component into that team site and people can have access to it here and they can start editing away with it. So it's really powerful in the fact that you can have it live in so many different places. One thing I wanna talk about before I hit send here is that as you can see here, it says the name of the, the loop note, but also who can access it. So if I select on people in your organization, let's drop this down and this is gonna say who can actually access this loop component. Right now, it is people in your organization can access it. We could set it to only people in the retail channel can access it or only people with existing access. I'd recommend if you're moving it from a general meeting into a larger team site, you'd wanna select on either only retail or people in your organization, and then you can choose that they can edit it or they can only view it. And that means that if it is a really big team, you might give them for the entire team only viewing permissions because you don't want everyone to make edits if only a few people want to actually run this, but you want everyone to see what's happening. But for this example, I'm gonna go can edit, hit apply. And now anyone in the retail channel, once I hit post, can view and edit this document, this loop component. So it's really cool. And then of course, not everyone lives within Teams. Some people prefer email. You can go ahead and copy that email, sorry, that loop component, jump over to a brand new email, control V, paste in that loop component. And you can see here it stays as a live occurrence. You can go ahead and select a few other people to share this with and then go ahead and send. So this could be adding in extra people that weren't in the retail team. The reason you might choose to send it via email as well as in Teams is that you could be sending a formal email and this loop component is just part of it or it could really just be for somebody that prefers using email. They can still collaborate with you in lifetime here as well. You can go ahead and send and then those people that receive the email can edit and work on that loop component in lifetime. Now I'm gonna quickly jump back to that team site and I'm gonna go back to our calendar where we first made this loop component. So let's open up that meeting here and then let's view our notes, which is automatically opening us, opening up for us. I'm gonna select on the three dots again and now that we've shared this around quite a bit, if I look at shared locations, you actually see that this lives in a few different places now. You've got it in a few different uh, Outlook emails because we've sent it off. And of course, if we select on see who has access, we can see that people outside of this meeting with the link have access. That includes Megan, Grady, and Adele because we email this to them as well. Loop Components is becoming a bigger and bigger feature in the way that I work, especially across multiple teams, because as you saw, it gives you that ability to create shared and live meeting notes, and it can transcend boundaries across a single application. And I love the fact that also in 2024, they're gonna allow you to incorporate Loop into OneNote. For those that use OneNote quite a bit, it's not an either or situation. Once you get that integration, you can actually use Loop and OneNote together. And I think that's gonna be really, really powerful. Let me know what you think about Loop in the comment sections down below. Of course, if you did like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wanna supercharge your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.